So there was a question, uh, which I appreciate very much, on uh, dual use oversight that uh, relates to what it's my job to talk about uh, next. My name's Paul Hunt. Uh, I was in your shoes in fall of 1979, so I've been at MSU for a while. And uh, the export control slides are interesting because they illustrate a risk that we all run as uh, academics in our research. and teaching and now in regulatory compliance because two months ago these were rock solid right and they're still temporarily right but on August 4th of this year President Trump signed into law following bipartisan approval in the House and Senate the John S. McCain National Defense Authorization Act which repealed the 1979 law that established the export control regulations of the United States of America and put in a new statute that uh, replaces it, which has some interesting differences. However, when they did that, Congress also said that until the Department of Commerce uh, changes specific commodity jurisdictions uh, determinations or specific regulations or specific guidance documents or court cases that are currently in process, everything stays the same until uh, uh, they actually uh, enunciate the changes that they are now enabled to do. So uh, if there are historians in the uh, crowd, they will remember the ancient English principle that in England there is no interregnum. There is no interregnum in export control either and that the uh, previous regulations uh, remain in force. It does pose a challenge to us in OVPRGS because we're going to need to uh, uh, allow people to reorient their thinking if some of the changes that we can anticipate come into uh, effect. But I'm putting out a great big caveat today that everything I tell you is true until you're told otherwise, but you may be told otherwise. And so you want to take that into account. So a group of constantly changing laws and regulations, that was truer than I knew at the time I wrote it. Uh, and the purposes, uh, basically export control regs have both civil and criminal uh, components. They just raised the criminal component for willful violation from 10 years in prison to 20 years in prison, so they're not kidding about this stuff. The uh, safe harbor that we have enjoyed as uh, academics is called the fundamental research exclusion, and that has meant <laughs> that if you do any kind of research whatsoever with hitherto one very specific exception, which is encryption, uh, and you do not accept publication restrictions, and you do not accept citizenship restrictions, and notice I'm saying citizenship, not national origin. If you do not accept citizenship restrictions on the grants or contracts under which you conduct that research, you are excluded from the scope of export control regulations today. This is a hugely important benefit that higher ed uh, has had. It was predicated on a sense of the Congress uh, passage in the 1979 law that has just been repealed that called for the pr uh, protection of open scientific exchange. Uh, that sense of Congress uh, is neither repeated nor contradicted explicitly in the new law, so we're going to have to see how that moves along. But for the time being, FRE is good law. And uh, it causes us to tell people some things at faculty orientation that are super important, of which the chief is don't sign non-disclosure agreements without talking to uh, the administration. If you don't know who to talk to, ask your chairperson. Uh, but there are folks in MSU Technologies and the Export Control Office uh, that handle this because you can take yourself out of the safe harbor if you do that. Um, export control uh, uh, can get the institution in trouble as well as you or your students or postdocs. Uh, this is a case uh, that's a few years old now out of Massachusetts Lowell but it illustrates something which is, although what you produce in your laboratory or your computer program or what have you 
under the fundamental research exclusion is protected from export control, things which you purchase are not. In other words, if you get a commercial laser or a commercial uh, power inverter or a commercial whatever, uh, and uh, it's export controlled at the point of manufacture, it remains export controlled when it's in the university, the FRE notwithstanding. And so we will work with you on so-called stewardship memoranda or access control plans to deal with that. We also have to worry about trade sanctions because MSU prides itself on its international reach. Uh, I don't know if anyone in the room have experience with USAID at your prior institutions, AID grants. We have lots of them here, uh, pretty much everywhere in the world. But places in the world can find themselves under trade sanctions from the Department of State, which carry equivalent penalties to the export control regulations. And so I've picked three examples here. We have ongoing projects in Afghanistan, Mali, and Sudan, and there are institutions and individuals in all those places who are on the specially designated nationals list for uh, uh, trade sanctions. You can't do business with them. Similarly, some banks that are Iranian owned in uh, Dubai where we have a presence. If your visa card shows up with one of those uh, bills, shows up with one of those uh, banks uh, on the uh, transaction list, you're going to be hearing from the federal government because your bank and the U.S. government scans for that. If you go places like Cuba with the Alumni Association, there are uh, laws which keep changing about every 12 months at the moment uh, concerning that. So all of these things we also help with. Our goal is not to try and train every faculty member on every export control and trade sanction regulation. If we did that, we really would be mind-numbing, as Vice President Xu uh, accused me of being earlier. The, uh, what we do is that when you get an award, a contract or grant award, uh, we take a look at it unless it's from an organization which we know is export control safe. So if you have an award from NSF because NSF does not impose uh, publication restrictions, but in fact requires publication and does not impose uh, uh, citizenship participation restrictions, we're not going to worry about that. But if you have an award from one of the DOD agencies, DARPA, what have you, or from Department of Energy, or especially the Department of Justice, which is extremely strict if you're in criminal justice or one of the other uh, departments that does business with them, you know, we'll look at that at award time to keep you out of trouble so that if uh, uh, there are restrictions there, we'll either negotiate them out if we're able to do that and you want us to, or we'll park the project in a, a, a venue in which it can be conducted with those restrictions in place, which we refer to as the URO. And similarly, if you buy things, purchasing will check uh, with the vendor whether export control applies to the laser that you bought. Uh, and that'll depend on how powerful it is and uh, what its cycle time is and so forth. Or if you um, wish to sponsor a student to join your research group, either uh, as a postdoc or as an employee, uh, folks who are here on F1 visas, the rules are different. But if you're bringing in a J1 or H1B visa person to join your group, uh, we will cross rough what we know about your research with the country that the individual comes from in an effort to uh, try and protect you from trouble. So we do our best to, as much as possible, invisibly uh, keep folks from getting crosswise with this. But we do ask that you fill out the forms when you get one assigned to you because of the visa request or because of the grant award or what have you, that you do it accurately and for heaven's sakes, if you're not sure about something, particularly if you're not sure about a request to send samples or prototypes or software to a collaborator at a uh, university outside of the United States, ask us. So the big red panic button there uh, is yours to push. Um, my, I'm in the phone book. You can call me 24 hours, seven days a week from overseas if you're traveling and you've feel that someone's asking you to give uh, them something that you're not sure you can do, 
but we do everything we can to keep you and Michigan State University out of trouble so that you have a smooth path to your scholarship. So next up, I'm looking for Dr. Pavarnik, and there he is. So thank you very much. Oh, we're, having a, we're having a conference September 6th, free lunch. Please come. <laughs>